Welcome to Dad Perfect, a podcast for busy dads and our favorite heroes, the wives who stand with them. Dads who understand that investing in your family is the greatest investment you can ever make. Dads who are ready to dig deep and become the perfect dad for your family to become Dad Perfect. Hey everybody, welcome to the Dad Perfect podcast. I'm David Rasmussen, your host. This is episode three, where we will be introducing the principle, Know Your Reflection, which is the first of our nine core principles of perfectly devoted dads. Thank you for joining me today. Welcome especially to all of you who are listening for the first time. We also always want to extend a special thank you to the wives who may be joining us today. As fathers, we all know that we are nothing without you. You are our heroes. Before diving into the first of the nine core principles of perfectly devoted dads, I do want to take a minute and review what our objective is with this podcast, why we need these principles and how they will change us as fathers. These nine core principles of perfectly devoted dads are an approach to fatherhood focusing on the core tools and strategies that we need to restore the meaning and purpose behind being a father and to build a joyful and fulfilled fatherhood legacy in our families. They cut through the messages of the world and focus on the meaning of fatherhood, on what is most important, our families. We won't discuss strategies on how to build your career or make more money. This is all about reestablishing the mentality that a father's greatest responsibility and fulfillment is found in the home. In the world today, fathers are bombarded with messages of uselessness, false responsibilities, unfulfillable measures of success, and an overall lack of meaning. These messages are often subtle, but they are powerful. Given generation of a deficiency in correct and uplifting messages concerning fatherhood, lack of general examples of good fathers, and even outright efforts to destroy the importance of fathers, It is no surprise that we, as fathers today, are often unprepared, confused, and overwhelmed with the role of being a father. So as we proceed through the process of implementing the nine core principles of perfectly devoted dads in our lives, we will learn to define and become the fathers we want to be. We will strengthen our love and our relationships with our wives and our children, and we will find joy and fulfillment in our role as fathers we will become dad perfect. So today, and for the next few episodes, we'll be digging deep into the first principle, which is know your reflection. This is the first principle under the core of fatherhood focus. As a reminder, uh, fatherhood focus contains the three principles that help us to improve ourselves as individuals and fathers. We talked about a little bit of that in the last episode. The other two principles of this core are be intentional, and forgive freely. And we're going to get to those two later. Today, we're just going to focus on knowing your reflection. You may have already heard some version of a quote like this. Quote, everything in your life is a reflection of choices you have made. If you want a different result, make different choices. End quote. I actually don't know who the originator of that quote is, but I've, I've heard that in various forms. Or another one like this, another unknown quote. Life is only a reflection of what we allow ourselves to see. And I might add, what we allow ourselves to be. Reflection is a powerful tool. There are three specific ways that we can use reflection as a tool to become better fathers. First, we have moments of reflection that lead to understanding and change. Second, we can see the reflection of ourselves in our children. And third, we can discover in ourselves the reflection of our own fathers, mothers, and everyone else who has gone before us that has influenced who we are today. So let's talk about the first one. First, we all have moments of reflection in our lives. These moments can be big, like a graduation, marriage, birth, or a death, or they can be small and fleeting. May I share two examples from my own life to illustrate? I will do my best to not get emotional, but you'll learn that I am an emotional person and that I get very emotional very easily when I talk about my children. So please forgive me if my emotions get the better of me during these examples. So my first story, it was March 2019, uh, still a little chilly here in Utah, and my wife and I had been waiting outside in the shade for over four hours. 
We were at the front of the line and wanted to make sure that we had the perfect seat to watch our oldest son. He was a finalist for the State Sterling Scholar, which is an award given each year to high-achieving high school students across the state. And my son was a finalist for the Skilled and Technical Sciences category. And we were waiting in the line. They opened the doors. We, along with hundreds of other parents, rushed in, found a seat, and we were able to get a seat a few rows back right in the center perfect seat. And I'm watching this program. And the uh, finalists brought, would be brought out, they would be announced, and they would read off all the accomplishments of these finalists. And then within each category, they would then name the winner of each category. And when they got to the skilled and technical sciences category, I have to admit that by the time they got to this category, they'd gone through dance and math and other English and you know, music, singing, those kind of things. And I thought, wow, I'm super proud of my son. I know he's accomplished a lot, but there's no way he's going to win this. I'm sad that I even thought that, but I just thought, everyone else is so accomplished. And so I thought, but I'm so proud of him for being here. He made it to the finals. This is amazing. And I'm just proud of him. We're going to be here and I'm going to support him. And when they announce the other person as the winner, I'm going to catch his eye, look at him and just show him how proud of him I am just for getting there. And so... When the skilled and technical science category came up, they announced all the finalists, and then they started to read off the accomplishments of the winner. And after they got to about the second or third accomplishment, I realized it was my son. My son is the one who won. I couldn't believe it. And I think he realized about that same time, like, oh my goodness, it's him. And this was a moment of great satisfaction for me as a father. I felt a little embarrassed that I wasn't more confident in him winning, but I felt an extreme amount of satisfaction, not because he won the award, but because he was thriving in what was important to him. We as an entire family had made some pretty big sacrifices and changes that led to and helped him to find and develop and eventually excel in what he loves, which is ranching. Where I'm not a rancher. He found that on his own. And from a lot of the changes that we made, led helped him find that. But this was a moment of reflection for me. This was a big one. It was a big stage, right? And it was in many ways a moment that reflected the culmination of a lifetime of parenting. We know, and we knew then, that there was still a lot of work ahead. But in that moment, I felt great. I felt grateful. I felt fulfilled and full of joy as a father. And that was my son on that stage. That was my son who won this award. And he did it. And I was so proud of him. And it was just a very full and joyful moment in my life. I want to share a second experience. This one's going to be harder. This is my daughter. And all fathers, you know, it's very close to your daughters. This one is more recent. It's an example of a simple moment, not a big stage like my son's, but a moment that was filled with all of the emotion of that same, that big moment that I just shared with you with my son. My daughter is graduating from high school this year. She is a beautiful dancer and dancing has been her love and passion her entire life. But high school has not been easy for her. During the summer before her sophomore year, she suffered a pretty severe concussion that has impacted her entire high school experience. She is also one of the lucky ones, if you want to call it that, that got to go to high school during all of the COVID craziness. Let's just say her high school experience was not ideal. It was not easy. It was actually extremely difficult for her. The hardest part was having to step away from dance for her in order to recover fully from her concussion. For almost an entire year, she was either not dancing or she was dancing in a significant amount of pain, specifically severe headaches. She couldn't remember her routines. She couldn't just remember much at all. It was not physically painful. It was emotionally painful. It was very hard for her. And it was very hard for me as her father to watch her endure this. Her pain was so great. She was trying so hard. And it was a long road for her to recover to the point where she could even dance again. And even now, it it can be difficult and it's still painful. But let's fast forward to last week. I attended her final ballet concert. She dances all types of dance. This was just a ballet concert. But in this ballet concert, she danced the role of the second star to the right in the Peter Pan Ballet. And despite what the name sounds like, it was actually a significant role and she had a solo. And I watched the most beautiful dancer I have ever seen. And I just sat and watched her on the stage all by herself doing what she loves. And she was amazing. And after the concert, I met her in the hallway and we just hugged and held each other. And we both cried because we knew that this was a big deal. I was so proud of her. And I felt in that moment of reflection, the same fullness, love, and joy that I felt at my son's award. And they were different. 
different reasons. And my daughter didn't win an award for her dance like my son did. She didn't get a news article written about her. But for me, it was equally rewarding and special. In our lives, moments of reflection can be joyful like these two experiences were for me. They could be times like a marriage or a birth of a child, but they can also come during difficult times, such as just the normal struggles of life or when dealing with the consequences of a poor decision made by a child or when struggling with the reality of death. All of these moments are opportunities to reflect on being a father. These moments can be used both as a tool and a measuring stick. We can think forward as well as backward and identify those things that are important to us, things that will shape what kind of a father we will be. For example, if you have young children, think of a moment in the future. It may be a graduation, a dance concert, a wedding, or anything else like that. How do you want to feel in that moment in the future? What kind of a relationship do you want to have with your child in that moment? How do you want them to feel toward you? Then, what do you need to do today and every day between now and then to create the relationship you want to have, to create the feelings you want to feel that you want your child to feel? By reflecting forward, you can identify what kind of a father you want to become. You can give yourself something to work towards, something you can achieve, and you can give yourself a way to know when you get there. Again, there are no metric that will define whether or not you are the perfect dad for your family. There's no score that you can get. There's no test that you can take. Only you can know that. And you have to know what that's going to look like or you'll miss it when it happens. It's an intentional experience. And when you get there, it's special because it has been intentional and you've worked for it. And it's extremely rewarding. The second way that reflection is a powerful tool is that our reflections can be seen in our children. Our children reflect us. I'm sure you've had or will have the simple but fun experience of shaving and noticing your son watching you maybe around the corner, but watching you intently and then trying to imitate you shaving. This has happened with all three of my boys. I did it with my dad. And every time I see it happen, it makes me happy. I even, it happened this morning with my 12-year-old who has special needs, and he was just intently watching me shave and kind of starting to imitate me. I love it. But our children reflect more than just how we shave, right? They reflect our behavior, the way we talk, our mannerisms, our beliefs, our convictions. If we want to know how we are doing as fathers, all we have to do is look at our children. Just as the reflection in a mirror is brutally honest, so is the reflection of ourselves that we see in our children. If there is something we see in our children that we don't like, the first place we need to look for improvement is within ourselves. Now, this doesn't mean that everything our children do or every decision they make is somehow our responsibility or our fault as fathers. Every child, every person has their own agency, their own accountability for the choices they make. They will make their own choices, but we can learn and improve by watching our reflection in them. Now, third, we are all reflections of our own fathers, our mothers, our grandparents, and many more that have come before us, anyone who has influenced our lives. I enjoy looking back through my ancestors and reading their stories. As a matter of fact, just the other day, I clicked my way back through familysearch.org and actually found a way all the way back to Adam and Eve. I don't know how legitimate it is, but it was a cool experience to go all the way back. More real now, in real time, I have been blessed to be raised by a wonderful father. I've learned from him many things that have helped me to be the father I am today. He has taught me by a good example. I've learned from him the value of sacrifice, of generosity, of hard work, devotion, and especially faith. I love him, and I'm so grateful for his example. He's not perfect, and there are things that I am striving to do differently than he did, but he has been the perfect father for our family. Too often, I hear from dads that their problems as a father stem from problems with their own dads. It is true that our fathers impact who we are as fathers, but it is not true that they determine the type of father we become. We can choose to learn from and improve from generation to generation, or we can surrender 
and allow ourselves to become victims of our own circumstances. It is our choice. But no matter what our relationships are with our fathers, mothers, grandparents, and more, we can learn from them how to be better fathers. By taking time to know our own reflections of our parents and ancestors, we can learn who we are and where we came from. We can discover what habits, behaviors, traditions, etc. we need to strengthen, improve, or possibly eliminate. And we can clarify what we want our own fatherhood reflection to look like. Knowing our reflection is a powerful tool to help us become the perfect dads for our families. So to review, there are three specific ways that we can use reflection to become better fathers. First, we have moments of reflection that lead to understanding and change. And planning for those moments helps us understand who we want to become and the relationship we want to have with our children and our wives. Second, we can see the reflection of ourselves in our children and we can identify things that we may need to change or that we're doing well by using our children as a gauge, like a mirror that we're looking into that is telling us honestly where we are at. And then third, we can discover in ourselves the reflection of our own fathers, mothers, and ancestors, and everyone who has gone before us, and we can take all of their experience, and we can grow from it, we can build on it, and we can become the perfect fathers for our families, growing from their experiences as well, good and bad. I am very excited to share these principles with you. Each day I strive to implement them in my own life. They are part of me, and my efforts to be the best dad that I can be for my family, and I know that they work. If you want more, you can get it. More stories, more tips, more strategies, more access to experts, more dads and moms sharing their own experiences, and much more. Simply go to dadperfect.com and sign up. Thank you for listening. I am so excited to be on this journey with you. Until next time, remember, you are the perfect dad for your family. You are Dad Perfect. This has been the Dad Perfect Podcast. Thank you for listening. If you want more, you can get it. More resources, more tips and strategies, more dads and moms sharing experiences, and much more. Simply go to dadperfect.com and sign up. That's dadperfect.com to sign up for more. Until next time, remember, you are the perfect dad for your family. You are Dad Perfect. Perfect.